Welcome to New Freedom Church. Over the next hour, we will worship together through song and hearing a message that is designed to help you grow in your faith. So please take a minute and fill out that connect form online so that we will send you a free t-shirt just like this. It is the most comfortable t-shirt you will ever wear. We wanna thank each of you who have shared our videos on Facebook, YouTube, and other social media forms because that really helps us to get more of the message out to many, many people that can benefit from the same content that you get today for absolutely free. Let's get started. Welcome this morning in the name of the Lord. Welcome to those of you who are here and those who are watching us online. My name is Dennis, I'm the associate pastor here at New Freedom Church. I get the honor and the privilege of serving with my friend, Pastor Joe, and it's an honor to do that, and I'm thanking so much for allowing me to, to share with you today and hear from the pulpit. I don't get to do this very often here, but uh, I appreciate, Pastor, that uh, you allow me to do this today. Of course, <clears throat> you understand that we are doing Christmas carols, and so I asked my wife, I said, Joy, what Christmas carol do you think I should do today? You'll never guess what she said. Joy to the world. And I have my tie on that says joy. I wear this once a year. It's on our marriage contract that I have to wear this tie one time a year. So guys, when you get married, make sure you read the fine print on those marriage licenses. And of course, Holly or Joe, whoever it is, my wife thinks you're the most wonderful people in the world because you put her name in lights. <laughs> Christmas is a time of year that uh, she can get really obnoxious sometimes because her name is everywhere. Everywhere we go, oh look, oh there's, a, oh, there's my name, oh there's my name. Oh, get over it. It's not, Christmas is not about you. But uh, all kidding aside, this has been a special Christmas for us because um, <coughs> this is our 50th Christmas together, and so it's been a really special time. <coughs> uh, <coughs> we've uh, known each other since first grade, and uh, <coughs> when I was 16, I went to the altar and accepted Jesus, and the song that we sang... I just remembered this. The song that we were singing was this. <coughs> if you want joy, real joy, let God come into your heart. So not only did I get the joy of God in my heart, he put us together. So I have joy every day, which is even better. It's even better. <coughs> but uh, this is, we are uh, doing uh, uh, joy to the world. And... Uh, I wanted you to, thank you. I wanted you to, uh, <clears throat> I read this story. <coughs> I read this story uh, this week. It was about a little girl in a Sunday school class and they were talking about the nativity and talking about the shepherds coming and the, the wise men bringing the gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And the teacher would, did a great job teaching. And so at the end of it, a little girl held up her hand and said, teacher, she goes, you know, it's really nice that they brought Gold, Franks, and more. Those are really expensive things, she said, but you know what? I bet Mary wished it had brought diapers. <clears throat> of course, they didn't even have diapers back then, but I just thought that was a cute story. So this particular hymn was written in 1674 by a guy, man named Isaac Watts. Isaac was a, uh, a really a good Christian man, and he had been to church, and he was tired of singing hymns that sounded like funeral dirges. You ever been there? There's some churches I've visited and that I've been asked to preach at. I'm like, I thought it was at a funeral because no matter what hymn they sing, it's slow. And I feel like I'm at a funeral. So anyway, this particular man thought he, would write, he, wanted, to write a, he wanted to write a song that was more joyful and upbeat and fast. And so he wrote the words to the song and uh, he actually said this, he said, to see the dull indifference, the negligent and thoughtless air that sits upon the faces of whole assemblies, while the psalm is upon their lips, might even tempt the charitable observer to suspect the fervency of their inward religion. He's saying, you know, once in a while, it almost sounds like they really have joy. 
And that's one of the things that I think that we're missing sometimes in the church is joy. And we're missing joy in our lives because we let too many things in that can take our joy. See, we get mixed up between what's joy and happiness. Happiness is a feeling. Joy is something that's in your soul. See, with happiness, you can have sadness, but there's no opposite of joy. And joy is something that comes from God. If we know Jesus, the scripture says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's our strength. When Mallory was born, someone gave us a plaque that said, uh, may he who has given you this special child, child to care for guide you and direct you, and may his joy be your reward. Now, he's not the only one that's got joy out of her life. We were supposed to get joy from her life. It's a special life. And so <clears throat> we, uh, we, 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 again, we get, we get mixed up between joy and happiness because, see, happiness can come and go. Sometimes we're happy, sometimes we're sad. Sometimes we're... Uh, but when we have joy, we can have joy no matter what is happening in our life. See, you may have been diagnosed with cancer, but cancer cannot take your joy. It cannot take your joy. You might have prodigal children that you miss and are not living the way you'd like for them to live, but that can't take your joy. You might have lost a loved one, and it's sad, but it cannot take your joy if you know the joy of the Lord. When my sister, my one sister passed away, and uh, I was talking with Mallory, and, and I told her that uh, your aunt is dying, and, and, uh, but she's going on to be with God in the heavens. So it was a really sad time, but Mallory put it in perspective. You know, she said, oh, good. Oh, good. She's going to be with God. That's a good thing. Doesn't mean we won't miss her. Doesn't mean it's not, doesn't have sadness. But it can't take our joy unless we let it. So we have to choose joy. It's a choice that we make whether we want to be joyful or feel sorry for ourselves. We need to get over ourselves. It's not about you and me. It's not about you and me at all as we go into this song. But <clears throat> this, this, this particular uh, song was based on Psalm 98. Uh, verses 9, 4 through 9. It goes like this. If I can get there. <clears throat> Excuse me. 98, verse 4. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth in song, rejoice, and sing praises. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of a psalm, with trumpets and the sound of a horn. Shout joyfully before the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. With righteousness he shall judge the world and the peoples with equity. Now it's interesting that psalm, it doesn't mention anything about a baby being born or a manger or the wise man. Nothing in the Christmas story, but this song that is a carol of Christmas <clears throat> comes from that psalm. As we go through it, you'll see that the gospel is in this psalm. The gospel is in this song. What this song you'll see is, is going to talk about, is going to talk about how we live and our testimony to the world. Our testimony to the world. Joy to the world, it says, for the Lord has come, that earth receive her king. What's joy? Joy is gladness. Joy is shouting for joy, glee, delight. It's something that should be inside you and me that we should be shouting to the world. 
either by saying it or more importantly, by living it. See, no matter what is going on in this world, this world cannot take your joy unless your joy is in the world. If it comes from the world, then you can lose it because circumstances will change. Things happen. And so it will go away. But if your joy is in the Lord, you trust in him, your joy cannot be taken. Doesn't mean you won't get sad. Doesn't mean you won't get uh, upset about things, but the joy of the Lord is in you. When things happen in this world, people are watching us. How we're reacting to what's going on in the world, what's going on in our lives. What should come through to them is the joy of the Lord that's in our life. If you don't have that joy, then you don't know him. You don't know him. John 15 says, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. The Lord wants us to be full of joy, overflowing joy. Joy that just comes out. We don't even have to think about it. It just happens. That's the way our lives should be. Joy to the world, for the Lord has come. That is our joy. That is our message to the world. The Lord has come. The question is, he's come near and he's arrived. And he's come here to seize your heart and my heart. He has come to seize our hearts. He wants our hearts because he knows that if he has our heart, he has everything about us. He has my wallet, he has my family, he owns my house, he owns my car, everything is his. None of it's mine. I wouldn't have it if it weren't for him. I wouldn't have my family, I wouldn't have my children. We wouldn't have had to wait 16 years for this angel to be born. Everything. And see, he comes and wants our hearts, and this is what he says to us in Matthew. He said, come unto me, all you are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He wants us to have rest. Joy will bring us rest. We have to choose it. We have to choose it. Lord has come, and then he, asks, he wants us to receive him, take him into our lives. See, whenever someone takes him, amazing things happen. Some people, one man was blind and he was able to see. A deaf could hear. Prisoners were set free. Are you in prison with something? Any sin you have in your life imprisons you. It chains you, it puts chains on you. So you can't experience the joy that our Lord has given to you. He goes on to say, prepare him. Prepare is in other words in that first verse. Prepare means to get ready and make clean. The question is, are you preparing for the coming of the Lord? See, these people, during the biblical times, didn't recognize Jesus. They didn't even know who, who he was. It had been 400 years, and they'd forgotten about him. They'd forgotten about the promises. Why? Because they quit talking about it. They quit telling people. How long has it been now with us? 2,000? Are we going to make the same mistake? Are we going to quit talking about him? We're going to quit living for him because it's been so long. We're waiting for him to return because he is going to return. Tells us like a thief in the night. We have to be prepared. We don't want to be like the 10 virgins, the parable of the 10 virgins. Five of them filled their lamps with oil. The other ones didn't. And when, and when, the, when they came, the, the ones who didn't have oil wanted to borrow the oil from the, ones, the virgins who had it. You and I can't borrow from someone's salvation. Oh, I'm good. I'm good because my dad's a preacher. 
No, you're not. I'm good because my family went to church their whole life. No, we have to work out our own salvation. We have to prepare our own hearts. We have to pray, prepare room for him. Not be like the innkeeper and there was no room when he came. They sent him out to a, to a stall. Do we do that with Jesus? <clears throat> he comes to us. Do we let him abide here or do we put him off? Well, just wait a little while. I'm not quite ready yet, Lord. I got some more fun I want to have. I don't want, I don't, I don't want to commit yet because it's no fun being a Christian. Ha! I've had more fun since I became a Christian than I've ever had in my whole life. The fun I thought I was having was just, it didn't last. Now it always lasts. He never runs out. Verse two, he talks about joy to the world. The Savior reigns. The Savior, Jesus came as our Savior to save us, to set us free, to save us from the, the curse of death, the promise of inviting him into our life and we can live eternally in the heavens with him someday. We can all be together. That's my prayer. I want us to all be together in heaven. Every one of us someday. That'd be great. We can just have New Freedom Church up there on this side of, this side of the, uh, the, the altar. We can all be there. I'd be, wouldn't that be great to see each other there? I want to see you all there. You know, we have to work out our own salvation because Joy and I joke about this, but it's really kind of silly of us because we like going... When Jesus comes back, comes back, Mallory's going. If Mallory isn't going, ain't nobody going. And so we want to be, stay close to her so maybe we can grab onto her foot or something just so we can get in, but it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. We have to be, we have to find the Lord ourselves. We have to prepare ourselves for the Savior, Emmanuel, God with us. It also talks about another verse about heaven and nature sings. You ever notice how nature, you like to get out in nature? Nature sings if you'll stop and listen. There's a guy down in Florida who was, <clears throat> one Sunday he didn't come, his wife was there, and, and, and I said, Where, <clears throat> where's your husband? She goes, he went fishing. And I said, wow, I hope he finds God out there. It's his nature. So that afternoon, I saw him in the park, and I was just joking with him, and I, <clears throat> and I said, uh, I was fishing today. Did you find God out there? And he got real embarrassed. And I said, no, no, no. I said, you probably heard a lot better sermon out there with him than you heard from me. We can find God everywhere. But the, the funny thing about it is he felt so bad about it, the next day he brought me a mess of fish that he caught. <laughs> and we ate for a week. I didn't mean for that to happen. But you can find God everywhere. Man, one of the places, one of the things I like the most is when the first snow and you wake up in the morning and it's covered the ground and nothing has been in it or stepped in it. That really speaks to me of God's nature. But I still don't understand why he couldn't create snow that didn't stick to the roads. I don't understand that. He could do anything. But we can find him everywhere in nature. It even says one place in the Bible that if we don't shout out and praise him, the rocks will. Oh, Lord, don't let that happen to New Freedom Church. We want, to be, we want to be people to praise God all the time, not only with our mouth, but praise him with our lives, living our lives transparently in front of all the people, our families and everyone else. Verse 3, it talks about, it says, sins and sorrows are will be no more. Sins and sorrows, all of us have them. Nobody gets out of that. If you've never sinned or you don't have any sorrows, tell me your secret. Because all of us have them. There are going to be sorrows in our lives. Sometimes, you know, there, sorrow can get so deep and, and it just almost takes us over. And God knows that. He knows what it's like to lose a child. But loss cannot take our joy. Nothing can take our joy if we have the joy of the Lord. COVID 
can't take your joy. Cancer can't take your joy. Loss of loved ones can't take your joy. Nothing can take your joy if you have the joy of the Lord in your heart. Not anything, because that's what will carry you through. Will carry you through anything and everything. Sins and sorrows, sometimes they can, they, can, they can become like thorns in your life, you know? You ever have some things that are people that are like thorns in your life? My wife probably, I've been a thorn for her for many years. But she's been kind. And she trims it off so it doesn't stick her. But we all have people like that, don't we? And we have situations to get into that it gets thorny and it's uncomfortable. Or like you get a rock in your shoe. See, those kind of things happen to all of us. But those still things still can't take our joy. Nothing can take your joy. I know I've said that a lot of times, but you'll hear it a lot more too. Nothing should take your joy, the joy of the Lord. He talks about his blessings, his blessings flow. Sometimes people don't think they get blessed. If you don't think you're blessed, turn to Psalm 103. 103, and it tells you all of them. I'll read a few. Psalm 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Okay, you ready to hear him? He forgives your sins, heals your diseases, redeems life from destruction, crowns you with loving kindness, satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. He executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He, uh, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to end, abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. That's a whole, that's a whole chapter of his benefits. And if you know him, you have all these benefits. You can't say that you don't have any benefits. Because he does. He does blesses us all the time. And he wants those blessings to flow out of us. As flow is another word that's in this, in this hymn. It flows. Blessings should flow out of us. Flow means to pour out or to deliver. John 7, 8 says this, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall show rivers of living water. To flow out of us, to pour out of us. That's where our life comes in. We live it. We don't talk about it. We live it. Sometimes we have to talk about it. But the best way to do is live it. Live it in your life. Live it all the time. <clears throat> Verse 4 talks about he rules the world with truth and grace. It's what two great words, truth and grace. You know why they're so, it says, God can, will never lie. What he says is true. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So you can count on him always being truthful with you. This word is the truth. There's not a word in here that's not true. Not a word. People want to change words and, and, uh, and they want to, we want to read it and go, ah, that verse isn't for me. He doesn't really want me to do that. Yeah, he does. There's a lot of hard truths in here. And sometimes truth is hard. But you know what? I always want to have someone in my life I know that will tell me the truth. That will tell me to help keep me in line and keep me accountable. Because I know you probably think that Pastor Joe and I are perfect, but we're not. We're far from it. We're just like you. We're going through life. We struggle like you struggle. We have temptations like you have temptations. It's no different. Hopefully the only thing is that we recognize them quicker and we repent for them sooner and we don't go back there. But all of us have them. All of us, every single one of us. Truth means that he's trustworthy and he's loyal and he's faithful and he's sure. John 8, 31 says this, then Jesus said to those Jews who believe him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples, and you shall know the truth and the 
Truth shall set you free. Truth is freeing. Truth is freeing. So I know people have been living ways they really don't want to live, but they don't know how to change. We know how. Because he's done it to us. We know. We can speak from experience. Sometimes we don't want to do that because we don't want people to think, oh my gosh, you did that? Yeah, yeah. Back when I was stupid. Back when I was stupid. Grace. Grace is unmerited favor of God. Oh my gosh. Unmerited favor. Have you ever experienced that? Just things happen and you don't know why they happen? Just unmerited favor. I mean, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> Joy and I weren't here. We weren't here for several weeks because we had COVID. We were sick. Mallory, who lives in the house with us, not a sniffle. That's called the favor of God. Because he knows that if she were to get it, it could be really, really bad. He shows favor. He shows favor for you too. You can think of times when he's shown you favor. Romans 5, 8, so God demonstrates his own love toward us while we were yet sinners. He died for us. He even knew we were filthy and dirty and he still died for us. You know why? Because he created us and he knows who he, want, who he created us to be. And it's not that person. Our goal is to find out who he created us to be and then become that person with his help and help others while we're at it. We talk about, uh, it goes on to talk about the glories of his righteousness Glory, righteousness, being upright, being holy. Luke 2, 13 says, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill toward men. You know, what I'm thinking about, it, you know, it says, he also said, uh, find joy, full joy. It didn't say happiness. He never uses the word Happiness. He always uses the word joy because there is not an opposite of joy. We get that mixed up and then we, and we think, and, we, and all of a sudden we're Christian and we wonder why we're sad or things don't go right and we, we lose our happiness. We're like, we shouldn't do that. You're right, we shouldn't because things happen. Everybody has them. It's what we do after them that makes the difference. Talks about the wonders of his love. Well, wonders are miracles. Well, Psalm 136, to him alone does great wonders for his mercy endures forever. I remember uh, Miss Mary telling me a story about her son. He was in Vietnam and he, she was worried about him and he prayed and, and found out later that uh, he was in a, a firefight and he ducked or moved or something and didn't get shot. And it was at the same time she was praying for him. That's miraculous. That's the wonders of God. One of the greatest wonders of God is when children are born. Oh my goodness. I was 36 years old when Mallory was born. I was a health teacher. I had two master's degrees. And I'm sitting there watching Mallory being born and going, wow, she was really inside my wife. It was a wonder. The birth is a wonder. One of the greatest miracles ever when babies are born. I'm born healthy. Even a greater miracle. And also one of the great miracles and the wonders is when a sinner comes to Jesus. The greatest wonder ever, the greatest miracle. Well, we've been talking about joy. Now, how do we find joy? Well, there's a real simple formula. There's an acronym for the word joy. It goes like this, J, Jesus, O, others, Y, you. That's a formula to live by. Jesus first, others second, and then you. And my family is Jesus first, my family second, and then me. I need to make sure their needs are met. Then I worry about mine last. That's what it means to be a Christian. And to meet the needs of others too, because you'll run into people, you've run into them, you know that <clears throat> they need help or something, and, and you walk on the other side of the street or turn to your head and pretend like they're not there. I don't want to have to answer for that one day. In the Sermon on the Mount, one of the, the last things it says, it talks about going the second mile and giving the coat, 
cloak as well as well. And then the, read this. It's the last sentence. It says, and to all, all who ask, give. To all who ask, give. That haunts me because that tells me I'm not supposed to question whether they're going to misuse it or I'm not supposed to judge whether they need it or not. I'm supposed to give. I'm supposed to give. See, this song is not just about Christmas. It should last all year long. You know, because God reigns every day. His mercies are new over and over. I love that song because he's faithful and he's good and he loves us. He rules over our sins and our sorrows and all the thorns of our life. And he rules with truth and grace and certainty. You want to know about joy this season and every day? Psalm 100, verse 3. It's very simple. You can, you can, you can uh, learn this. Know that the Lord, He is God. There's no one greater and no one can give you joy like he does. See, this belief separates us from Christian, our, our optimism from the rest of the world. People don't know what joy is. They know what happiness is, but they don't know joy. See, believing and knowing that the Lord himself as God of the universe should be sufficient enough to encourage us to be optimistic about life. See, God is sovereign. He's omnipotent, he's omniscient, he's omnipresent, he's all things. See, your joy and my joy shouldn't come from the world, so if it doesn't come from the world, the world can't take it away. Nothing can take your joy away. He's the answer to every problem, the solution to every heartache and remedy for every problem we ever face. He's on the throne. He's in control. He is our God and nothing can stand against him or the church or his church. That's you and me. He wants us to make joyful noises with singing to let them know that he reigns and let the earth be glad. See, we have a choice. Joy is a choice. We have lots of choices in life. One of the choices is whether we accept Jesus or not. We also have what comes along with that choice is joy. Because if you choose Jesus, you choose joy. You choose Jesus, you choose joy. If you don't know that or understand it, then maybe you really haven't committed yourself. I don't know, I can't answer that. I have to ask myself that sometimes. It's good to ask. It's good to search our hearts. And I know here with this last song, I'll let Nate take this, but this last song is gonna be about searching your heart. So whether you really know Jesus or not, whether you have chosen him or not, well, I want to tell you this. I don't know if you can read this or not. It says, I choose joy. I choose joy. I want you to choose joy too because I want your life to be joyful. I want you to have a heart that's full of joy that nothing can take away. No matter what happens in your life or comes before you, nothing can take the joy of the Lord from you. That's my prayer for you today. Thanks for joining us this week. I am so excited about what we have planned for next week. But before then, would you take a minute and go to the video description and either leave us a review or click on one of those links for all the information available. And one last thing, your generosity really does make a difference. Would you prayerfully consider partnering with us financially, which enables us to reach even more people with the gospel. God bless.